Hi there, my name is Kay Moon and I'm a twin soul channel and Western astrologer. And this is a video about the full moon in Taurus for 2021 that occurred on November 19th, 2021 at 3.57 a.m. If you happen to be on the Eastern seaboard of the United States, please check a time zone converter for your local time. Before we begin, I'd like to just say thank you to everyone who has booked a reading with me in the month of November uh, and December. There are a few more spots left for early January. Normally, I only allow the calendar to be open up to four to six weeks in advance. I've added some additional time in there because I am taking time off for the holidays. So if you would like to get on the calendar for early January, you are welcome to book one of those spots that are left. Once those spots are sold out, I will be closing the calendar until we get a little bit more into December so that the wait to get a reading with me remains in that four to six week window. So if you know you need time with me, sometime before the end of the year or at the first, I shouldn't say before the end of the year, at the start of the year, then now's the time to go ahead and book that. Um, because after that, there won't be an opportunity to book for some time. So yeah, I wanted to say that before we jump in. Um, and I look forward to reading for those of you who have holiday readings with me in December and the early part of January. I look forward to talking to you. This full moon in Taurus is an extraordinarily special one as it is coincided or coinciding with uh, the first lunar eclipse on the Taurus Scorpio uh, nodal axis. And this ushers in the beginning of a transition in our nodal axis focus for the next two years and a new eclipse cycle. While eclipse cycles do overlap, we will have a final eclipse in, on the Sag Gemini axis a little bit uh, right before we close the year. This opens up a new conversation in collective energy in terms of where are we going and what have we come from? What are we releasing? What are we letting go? The Taurus uh, Scorpio axis in the zodiac wheel is representative of our values, what we value within ourselves, what we value within the world, what the world values about us, and how we feel about what the world says our value is. This axis also governs sensuality and sexuality, Taurus, Scorpio in that order. And further, it governs earned income, money that we work with to get our hands through our own efforts from our own hands and money that is granted to us, gifted to us, um, or loaned to us by external sources, uh, Taurus, Scorpio, respectively, again, there. So this is going to be a really significant cycle um, because much of the eclipse energies are also going to have focal point uh, connections to Saturn and Aquarius and Uranus and Taurus as we move through this two-year eclipse cycle. Um, we can expect change of the highest sort, much of it having to do with the areas of life that have just been described for all of us collectively. We can very clearly see the ushering in of cryptocurrencies and new, the rise of fintech applications to manage money and new ways of interacting with money or concepting money. Uh, and there's further an energy here of a restructuring of all sorts to the way we understood life as we know it. And that's the energy of this Uranus in Taurus. Life as we know it, the status quo, fixed sign Taurus has always been about sustaining life as is. But Uranus, the change maker, arrived here a couple of years ago and started ripping out the roots, lifting up, tearing up the foundation 
so that we could move to a much higher place of evolution and alignment with our divinity as divine souls incarnate here on earth. Remember, Uranus is the divine consort of Gaia, the change maker, the divinity bringer. So we have this opportunity to align ourselves through this process of that which we have always meant to become, our highest self, the best of who we are, as long as we are willing to honor that's the scorpionic piece, who it is we know we need to let go of in order to get there. There are sacrificial themes to this entire process. Scorpio is about the resurrection cycle, but that cycle always starts with a death. It starts with an ending first. We cannot move into a new house if we are not also willing to let go of the house we used to have metaphorically speaking. Now, there are those of you who I'm sure can own three houses at one time, but what this Uranus is doing and the Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle is inviting us into is an opportunity to release what was that no longer serves so that we can grab what is that is everything we're meant to become. So uh, really exciting times. I will, I received channeled messages about this eclipse cycle and what it would mean for light workers as well as twin souls in the summer of this year. So I just kind of held those in case new things wanted to come in. And so I'll be releasing that in the next week or so. So look out for those, but that brings us to this full moon in Taurus. So we have at this lunation, here is the moon. You can see her at the 27th degree of Taurus. And we have the moon in, in opposition to Mercury, who's speaking with the sun here. We also see that Vesta's in the mix and the south nodes in the mix with the sun. And that just really echoes this, who is it that, that we have allowed ourselves to try to continue being that's already dead and gone. South node is an end point. It's what we're releasing to the past, what no longer serves. We allow it to move into the portal of transformation. And with sun, our essence, Mercury, aspects of our mind, Vesta, that which we have been dedicated to, if there's a way of being that is starting to present as no longer serving you, this particular lunation will have brought it to the forefront in no uncertain terms and the events leading up to this lunation. This whole year, 2021, which I believe for people who do numerology is a five year fives from my understanding from those folks represent transformation and change. This whole year has been about this. It has been about getting to the clarity of what it is that we recognize must be released in order to capture or grab that which we know we are meant to become. And so this, this lunation is just, you know, another subtitle in this particular chapter of the book. Uh, full moons do represent closings, completions, culminations. Uh, lunar eclipses amplify this energy and they bring in the hand of the divine to create closures around certain things for us. And this has been fully echoed throughout the year in multiple lunations as the placement of Pluto has spoken to the new and the full moon multiple times this year, which I don't wanna say that's completely unusual, but the number of back-to-back -back lunations in which Pluto had a direct contact to the moon, new or full, is emblematic of the ways in which it's it's time. It's time for us to let go. It's time for us to move on. It's time for us to release, relinquish, surrender that which no longer serves and allow it, place it on the altar for transformation. 
give it up so that the hand of the divine can transmute it into its new format, its new energy. So this lunation is part of this ongoing cycle, this ongoing conversation. And it's only further highlighted as we get to a point of almost urgency, I'd say, with this need to release that which doesn't serve. There is a, there's a fervency in the energy now as we move through the second year of our experiences in, you know, a global challenge that we've all had. There's a real recognition of at this point, what, what's got to give. And that's what, like what we have to relinquish, what we have to give up. Okay. And for many, many, many of us, there have been things, you know, taken from us that we would rather not have had taken. I spoke at the last lunation, the new moon in Libra, or no, new moon in Scorpio, that here in the United States, we just hit a 60-day moratorium on eviction um, for people who were harmed by the pandemic, which I'm sure you guys know what that is, but so that I'm not censored, I say it that way. Um, if that's the case for you and you know, you're know you experiencing being without a home or having something taken away, something ended through this process, you know, I just want to remind you that life is long and transformation is inevitable. Change will come. What it is now is not what it will be in the future. And I just invite you to, even though you may needed to have let go of a structure that you called home, that to step into the trust that you are always at home with the you inside of you that you live with and in the hand of the divine. So my heart goes out to you. If that's an experience that's happening, I know that's not something that media is covering very well here in the United States, but I, it's the impact on millions of individuals who you know, were impacted by this experience on their ability to have home. My encouragement, I send you strength, encouragement, perseverance, and the reminder that change is always inevitable. There will be a solution. There will be another home, a next place to go for you. Okay. Um, so we talked about this moon conversation with Pluto. Um, and because of the placement of Mercury in the mix here, Mercury is not super close. Pluto is certainly in a tighter aspect orb with this lunation, but Pluto and Mercury together are bringing in a lot of really deep thinking, a lot of capacity to face really difficult realities, difficult or challenging conversations, a willingness to face Face down truth or face down fear in search of truth is a bit of what this is. The work involved in facing our fears so that we can be with the truth is it's a it's a transformative process. You know, there's there are moments when a white lie might feel great, but this isn't one of them. This is one of these moments where we're really being asked and tasked with understanding what the truth capital T is for us internally about our lives and about ourselves. And that's also evidenced by this, the conversation Uranus here is having with Venus and Mars, which I'm going to get to momentarily, uh, and with Saturn also. There's some real difficult truths around the structures of our lives and our relationships that this moment in time is asking us to face so that our lives can transform to be in alignment with where it is we're meant to be going, who we're meant to be serving, how we're meant to be leading, 
and what it is we're meant to be learning. You know, when I was meditating on this lunation, the visual that my guides gave me and they showed me that it wasn't just for this lunation. It was also for the year, the way the year worked. They, again, they showed me this splitting of train tracks almost, this moving in a different direction, this kind of like the train was moving, you know, due north, you know, at 50 kilometers an hour. And there's a breaking off point where it's taking a hard turn in a westwardly or eastwardly direction. And so this year would have been a year where it's almost like maybe you thought life was moving in one direction, only for the circumstances of 2020 ensuing fallout and recovery to have clarified for you in terms of career, living circumstance, relationship. Yeah, I thought life was moving in that direction, but I am very clear now as we enter the end of 2020, life is moving in a very different way. And so this calls for a lot of surrender. It calls for a lot of acceptance. It calls for meditative time alone. Uh, if that's how you move into processes of acceptance or therapeutic work with others or another, if that's how you move into surrender and acceptance. But nevertheless, you know, the change that is upon us this year is forcing us all to allow, allow for a trust, I guess is the best way I can put it. It's forcing us to trust that what's unfolding is what's meant to be unfolding, even if it's not what our conscious mind saw for the direction of our lives up until this point. We have moon um, speaking to Jupiter as well. Uh, let's get back. Let me back off Pluto. Let's talk back to the moon. Moon is opposing Mercury, but from Mercury in Scorpio is, it's, it's a researcher, it wants to know things, it goes deep in the thought process, it wants to understand things, not just at the superficial level, but underneath. But as we dig into those trenches, as I mentioned earlier, our fears are naturally going to come up. The things that we'd rather not have to face, that maybe we've spent all year avoiding having to look at, this Mercury and Scorpio has been knock, knock, knocking. You need to face the truth here um, in relationships with yourself, with work and career, with money. That's a big one at this lunation as well. We also have Jupiter here in square to this Mercury and trining, or sorry, squaring this particular uh, new moon. Sorry full moon in Taurus. I'll just draw that out here so you can see it. Because this is a T-squaring energy with Jupiter having conversation, T-squares bring a lot of tension. They, bring, they can bring a feeling of feeling really torn in two different directions between our ideals and what we hope is the truth, that's Jupiter and Aquarius, and some very difficult realities that's that Jupiter and Aquarius facing off with this moon, sun opposition, full moon in Taurus. Difficult truths brushing up against our hoped for reality forces us to get into this Leo energy. And I talked about this at the last lunation. It echoes here. This T-square is still in effect. When we're in a T-square energy, one of the best ways that we can work with it is to come to occupy the sign that is conspicuous in its omission. There's four fixed signs, Taurus, Aquarius, Scorpio, but the one that has no planetary occupation right now is Leo. And so in order to release some of the tension here from this T-square, and to find our path forward, we are meant to step into Leonine energy. That Leonine energy is about our sovereignty. 
It's about finding our way to relinquish and release being controlled or enmeshed with other people. It's about getting back on our throne, being centered in our lives, and taking creative steps to make the future that we want to see occur happen in the daily life now. And so as we occupy this Leonine energy, as we step into it, as we lean into it by honoring you know, what's true for us, difficult truths, as I was saying, and desired and hoped for reality, like if we could have it as a best case scenario, how would that look? There are steps that we will need to take, but those steps also require a Leonine approach. And that does mean freeing ourselves. From, from old self, that's this sun south node stuff, old fears, that's that mercury opposite moon stuff, and relinquishing old value sets that just no longer apply in the new world that we find ourselves in. And I was explaining this to a friend at the top of the week, as this was something that I learned ages ago. Um, you know, and this friend is actually working on some new goals in their life as well. Um, and, you know, making great strides around it. But the concept that I was introduced to is just in order to get some things that we've never had, we have to be willing to do some things that we've never done. It's not just going to magically happen. There's if we've been afraid of starting this business and getting online, we need to figure out, okay, I, I yield. How do I get online? If we've been afraid to uh, that we would never find love, that we would never have relationship, and we've been telling ourselves a story around our unlovability or the impossibility of relationship, this is a period of time that would say, you know what, you're holding yourself hostage with the stories. Why don't you do something you've never done, get some support you've never had so that you can get an experience you've never had either. If there is, you know, a, a dream business or, you know, a dream hobby that you've wanted, but you know you need mentorship or you need to just be willing to risk, be willing to try this lunation and all the lunations of this year, but this one in particular is saying how, again, how about you stop holding your dreams hostage? How about you try doing a new thing? So it's an exciting time, but it does come with transitions for those of us who have significantly fixed energy in our charts. If you're one of the fixed signs that I just mentioned, or if you have high fixed energy in your chart, this is a, a challenging energy where you are being asked to pay attention to where you're holding on despite the universe actively ripping certain things out of your hands, crumbling it right before your eyes and showing you the inevitability of needing to let go. The concept resistance is futile comes to mind here. Um, it's going to be much easier to just surrender and allow the change to take place and heck, even dance with it, participate in it, jump into it with both feet. Okay. Um, we also have this other T-squaring energy here with our friend Saturn having a conversation with Mars and Uranus. And again, this is all from fixed sign placements. Mars and Scorpio has, again, a very driven to get to the bottom of things energy. Mars and its home sign, Scorpio, wants to make change, ambition, effort, forward projecting movement, and change sign, Scorpio, is defiantly trying to make change, ensure things shift. And it's only amplified by the power of this Uranus opposing it or Mars opposing Uranus, depending upon how you say it. I think most astrologers say it, Mars opposing Uranus, but 
The deal here is Uranus being another big change maker, Mars, our effort sitting in the sign of change or a sign of transformation, I should say, and Uranus coming to it from its placement in Taurus, where Uranus has been shaking up the status quo for the last two years. This is a period of time, again, resistance is futile. Whether it's your heart that changed, your mind that changed, or your circumstances that changed, trying to get things to go back to a pre-change existence will not work in this energy. It will not be possible. And so I recognize, again, for those of us who have strong fixed energy in our charts, Leo Aquarius, Taurus Scorpio, if you are one of these signs or have significant placements in one of these signs, this is a period of time where my recommendation is to the degree that you're able, go slow, face the truth, move one step at a time into the change, don't fight, don't resist, allow what's crumbling to crumble, allow what's going to go, and honor the truth of what has changed here, whether, again, it's in your heart, it's in your mind or it's in your circumstance. Saturn adding to this T-square as the fulcrum point is bringing forward this energy, especially from Aquarius, of recognizing that whatever has changed, whether you wanted it to change or not, is in the highest good. It is in divine order at this time. Things had to change. And there are those of us, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, who are experiencing really painful types of change, right? Losing a home isn't easy. Losing a loved one to disease is really painful. It's very hard. But the invitation on the table with Saturn and, as the fulcrum point in this T-square and Jupiter as the fulcrum point in the previous T-square I was just discussing is to recognize from both of those in the sign of Aquarius, that how we are living out aspects of a collective timeline and a collective story that must be told for the future to be better than the past and the present. <laughs> you know, I was listening to something, um, I think it was Dolores Cannon many years ago, uh, where she was asking, you know, one of the people who uh, had been under hypnosis and had experienced a past life where, you know, they had died during World War I or World War II, you know, she had asked, what was the point? What was the purpose of so much death and so much bloodshed? Why did humanity have to go through this? Why did you have to go through this as a soul? And the answer that came back was that it was all of us went through this as souls. We agreed to go through it because there would be a time in the future where humanity would need to understand how awful, how painful, and how unnecessary this caliber of bloodshed needs to be. We chose to do it as souls simply because the story must be told, the information must be known, that what we are experiencing presently as a collective, we have choice, we can go in another direction. And so if you're finding your life is in one of these moments where you are part of and caught up in a collective lesson, you know, around health and well-being, you know, there's, there seems to be a lot of conversation around, you know, are we doing what's right for our health? Are we doing what's right for our well-being? Whose right is it to choose, right? Um, and are we doing right not just by ourselves, but by those in the collective that we are connected to because we are all connected? Or whether or not the conversation is about housing and homes or race, um, and ethnicity or religion, whether it's about poverty 
and where you're able to live and the resources where you live, if you're on a migrant journey, right, or an immigration journey, it's important to remember that sometimes the pain we personally are experiencing may be disproportionate to where we feel like our life should have taken us, given our starting point, right? We didn't deserve that. How did we end up here? But it's also important to remember that sometimes the soul's journey is one that is setting up a brighter future through these collective experiences for tomorrow. And that we're all here as light workers in service to that brighter future. And this collective energy down here as these fulcrum points, Jupiter and Saturn, Jupiter wanting to expand on collective quantum leaps forward, Saturn wanting to transform the way the collective energy is operating. These storylines, these narratives, these experiences are playing out before our eyes so that not only are we making changes in our individual lives, but we are setting up collective change and transformation for the future. And again, the best choices are always going to be the choices from this angle, this chart, this perspective, and the way this energy has been set up many times this year are the answers that lead us back to our sovereignty, back to our ability to decide for ourselves, choose for ourselves, but also be good providers for other people, not just paternalistic providers for other people, but certainly providers for other people that give from a full cup, not an empty cup. Okay, so I know that was a very long winded explanation to explain this energy. Hopefully that explanation made sense. Um, mainly, I'd like to in that provide hope, encouragement and strength for those in the collective who've been hit by this energy in ways where they feel like they have lost things that life like it, it can feel like life is just really unfair. I provide you this hope to say it may feel unfair now, but remember we're part of a collective fabric and that your story matters, what you're going through matters and sharing that story and getting to sovereignty in your life will then help others make better choices for the future. All right. Okay. Let's get into some of the more, um, some minutia. Um, some of the more individual energies here. Um, there's definitely some mom vibes going on with Ceres in the mix. I love seeing her in the mix with the North Node. Um, there are those of you who, yeah, you know, speaking to Pluto here. I mean, the best way that I can put what I'm seeing, unfortunately, and there's loose but not direct conversation with Neptune. Um, under this lunar eclipse and this full moon in Taurus, there's definitely uh, miscarriage and or abortion vibes with Ceres in play um, at this lunation and Ceres talking to Pluto. Um, so, you know, if that's... It, Again, the invitation, if this is the case for your life, whether, you know, the child was planned for, surprise, wanted, you know, or, you know, whether you wanted children or the child chose you and wanted to be on planet Earth, whether you chose to end the pregnancy, terminate the pregnancy, or you're choosing to, um, or you didn't choose that, but a miscarriage happened with this vibes because Ceres does operate. The mother energy from Ceres has a lot to do with the loss of a child. Um, and with full moon culminations, lunar eclipse endings, there's definitely a bit of that energy here. I would like to offer, you know, whether it's chosen or not, my condolences, because I know that's not easy whatever choice you made that wasn't necessarily an easy choice. So um, my guidance is just get the support you need, 
to be at peace with what has occurred. Don't try to go through it alone. You know, separation from souls um, or loss of a soul, chosen or unchosen. It, there's always, there's when that connection gets broken from mother to child in any way, there's always a bit of heartbreak, challenge, and pain. So if you're able to get support, my recommendation is to certainly do so. Um, but again, you know, remembering that this energy is in the collective at this time. It's not just you. And so you'll be finding that as you reach out for support, you will find that there are others who may be experiencing something similar and be going and sharing your stories with one another, especially with series in Gemini will help you heal. Gemini is the storyteller energy here. It's the exploratory conversational energy here. Okay. Uh, this could also just represent lessons in motherhood for those of you who, you know, may not have experienced that extreme of the uh, planetary energies here. Uh, challenges in motherhood, lessons in motherhood, uh, where you're just, you know, children could be leaving home, you know, to go off to college or university or, you know, some other such experience, uh, learning how to let go, you know, they may be at an, an age where, you know, they're moving from needing you all the time to needing you much less. That's another way this energy can play out and most likely the dominant way it's playing out for many. Okay. And now I want to talk about relationships <laughs> because the conversation about relationships is certainly here in this chart with Mars sextile Venus and Uranus speaking to both of them. Venus is in trine to Uranus and Mars is opposing Uranus. Uranus in the world of relating to these two um, <clears throat> this could also be about money. So it's about specifically money and love. So take what I'm about to say and apply it to the area of life that is most relevant for you. Um, if there's big money changes, big love changes. Know that they were on the schedule. This is in divine order. And even if it is hard, there is something in this for you in your growth. And you can trust that many times in order to plant a garden, unfortunately, we do have to let go of last year's uh, blooms that have now gone to seed. We have to weed that garden first. And that's a bit of what's going on here. There's a weeding of the garden. There's a changing of the energy here. Um, much of this with Mars opposite Uranus is going to be an impulsive energy. Um, and this could be sudden changes, sudden endings, sudden completions, a really impulsive uh, ending or beginning because Uranus trine Venus can actually create an energy of new relationships. So it can kind of be during this lunation period, sudden ending, sudden beginning to a relationship. Uh, all at one time for, for many people. But this could also be sudden completion, sudden new start financially. So in the same lunation period, you may lose a job, get a job, or um, you may be declined for a loan, get a loan, or, you know, it's the kind of energy where you could um, lose an investment or an inheritance, but you know, gain a home or gain a house, something like that. There, there's in the same breath as we're experiencing this, there, there is loss in life and they're going hand in hand at this lunation and at this eclipse. Um, specifically in the realm of love and money for many people, but it could be other areas of life as well. The interesting thing about this is there's there's an unsettled energy to it. And the reason it's quite unsettled, even though there's benefit with Venus talking to Uranus so harmoniously, Chiron is also talking to Venus. And when Chiron and Venus are having a conversation, this conversation is a square, there is a, a background conversation around 
not enoughness. I don't deserveness. Um, you know, kind of painful wounds that need to be dealt with and addressed in order to do two things. One, surrender to the change and two, receive the good that's coming with it in time. So I say that to say, you know, as things are transforming, as we round out this year, because there are plenty more changes to come. And this lunation is asking us to accept the changes that have arrived thus far. The one thing that this Chiron Venus connection is giving us the opportunity to do is to differentiate what's going on in our lives versus what's also going on in collective energy so that we are not using these collective experiences of loss that are happening to mean something about us to make it that somehow we are deficient, somehow there's something wrong with us, we must have done something bad to deserve this. It's really important to create that separation. And this lunation, uh, specifically this configuration with Mars and Uranus and Mars and Scorpio and Chiron talking to Venus, this whole setup here is one that it's going to bring the not enoughness stories to the surface. They are going to be there. They are going to be loud. And you may even find that there's like a projection, especially with Mars opposite Uranus here. Um, we, you may find that there's like a projecting onto uh, others that which we find difficult to accept within ourselves. So um, you may need to trace that projection back, especially if in your heart or mind, there's any finger pointing or blaming when it comes to money, when it comes to uh, relationship at this time, well, they did and they blah, blah, and they blah, 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 and they said, da, 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 right? If it's, if you're finding yourself telling stories about your life where it is all their fault, <laughs> um, this sovereignty energy is reminding you to remember where your power is in the circumstance, to not give it away anymore, to recognize how we may have been active participants in our own victimization, and that there is something to be done about it at this time, but it will require letting go of the victimhood mentality, of the wounded identity of this idea that somehow, some way, either we, we were to blame, it was all of our fault because we're bad people, or they were to blame, it's all their fault because they're bad people, right? Anytime, you know, we're looking at this in that way, there's this opportunity to miss how we are powerful, sovereign beings who have the power to create our realities, right? And so there's the dance, right? There's the dance. What's out here in the collective energy that's happening that I am a part of, right? You know, if you're a person of color, if you're a migrant, if you are a man or a woman, there are definitely changes happening in the collective around certain groups and identities, you know, if you decided to opt to get the shot, if you opted not to, what does that mean, right? There's changes going on in the collective energies and simultaneously. And there's also the choice you have to what you do with it, right? The same victimization uh, or victimizing experiences have hit many people in these circumstances, but there are those who rise and there are those who wallow. And with this full moon in Taurus, we get to choose who are we going to be. If you've heard something that resonates for you, I invite you to hit that like button. If you're new here, please subscribe. It's my pleasure to be able to read for you. I'm here at most new moon and full moons giving, dishing out what the energy looks like for light workers. There are just a few spaces left for readings in the early part of January, and then I'm going to close up the calendar. 
And I'm going to be closing it up because I don't like to have um, people. I only like to have people holding space in the calendar at a max four to six weeks in advance. Um, so I'll be closing up the calendar um, until we get further into December, and then I'll open it back up again for the for readings at the end of January. But if you know you want to talk to me at the start of the year, there's just a few spots left at the beginning of January. You're welcome to book those in now. And then if you're not on my private list, my strong recommendation would be to get on it because what I'm going to do in between is start to offer live mini readings on my live mini reading channel so that if you'd like to be able to talk to me before the end of the year with a single question, um, you can certainly do that. And that's a very affordable way to talk to me in a faster period of time uh, with one question. Okay, but I will be offering that to the private list. The link to join is below this video. It's unlikely I'm going to announce that on this channel. Um, it would just create too much chaos for me personally. So if you want to get on the private list, do it in the link below. And the next time I'm live on the mini reading channel, you will be the first to know. Take great care and bye for now.